Hi and welcome to Essential Lightroom. In this video I'm going to show you how you can recreate the effect that I've got on screen in front of me. It kind of reminds me of a Halloween movie effect. You've got some crushed blacks, you've got oversaturated red tones and a slightly desaturated overall look. As always, there's a free preset that'll get you up to speed with this particular effect. You can download that. Link is in the description below. As always, remember to stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to take you through a few extra steps that are not covered in the preset that will show you how I've processed the effect of this image. It's going to give you an insight into my work process and also may, you may pick up a few extra tips and tricks when you're working on your own specific images. So let's take a look at how all of this is done right now. So we're going to be using this image as the starting point. As you can see, it's already been processed to a certain style. It's a stock image that I've just taken from a free download. And I'm going to use this as the basis for the preset. Now, there's three versions of this preset available, Halloween 1, 2, and 3, and each one of them has a slightly stronger effect. We're going to concentrate on the third, the strongest effect in this video. As always, I'm going to take you through on the develop module in Lightroom, and we're going to go through each of the panels that are used step by step over the process, and I'm going to show you what I've done. So if we jump over to the basic section first of all, First thing I want to do is just generally warm the image up ever so slightly. So we're going to take the temperature slider, we're going to move that over to the right hand side to about plus 9 or 10, somewhere around there. And you'll find that'll start to give this a slightly yellow effect, which will just warm up the tones and give us a little bit more sort of in, keep, in keeping with that sort of the darker, warm, gritty kind of feel that I want. The tint I'm going to leave as it is. I don't want to influence any of the green or purple into the image itself, and the exposure is also looking fine. But I do want to bump the contrast up just to give it a little bit stronger contrast between the different tones in the image. So we're going to take that up to about plus 15, 16, somewhere in that kind of region. That kind of gives it a good starting point. And the next step, and again, a lot of these things are going to be image specific. So even when you're using the preset, don't think it's just a one click and nothing else needs to be done. You're still going to probably want to tweak that for the image that you're working with. So for this example, we're going to take the highlights. We're going to drop those down because I want to bring back some of the detail that's in this lamp with the candle and so on. So we're going to just drag the highlights down to about minus 25, somewhere along those lines. That's going to make sure we don't clip any of the detail inside the lighter areas of the image. And then we're going to move on to the shadows. And we're going to open those up a little bit. So we're going to take that up to about a plus 20, 25, somewhere along that. That's looking pretty good. That's going to open the shadow detail up. So when we start to go in and add clarity to this and we start to use the dehaze function, it gives us a little bit more scope for what we're doing in those darker areas. You don't just crush everything down then and lose all the detail. So next up, we've got the whites, and we're going to push those up a little bit, so about plus 15, 20, somewhere along that kind of region, to give it a little bit more pop in the image itself. And we're going to also push the blacks up to... Let me just put the whites back up. Let's move. I'm going to take the blacks up to about plus 15, somewhere around that kind of range. That's looking pretty good. I kind of like that. So now we're going to take the clarity, and we're used to using the clarity. That's really going to enhance the sort of contrast between the highlights and the shadows and really make everything look just a little sharper. So we're going to pump that up. I'm not going to go crazy with it, about plus 20, but that's going to give a nice strong effect somewhere on that kind of range. That's looking pretty good. So that really starts to make everything pop out. The detail in the sort of the knitted cardigan that's been worn, the detail in the, the sort of old leaves, all that starts to pop out nicely. The next thing I want to do is I want to desaturate the entire image. I'm not going to concentrate on controlling the saturation and the balance between the cooler colors and the warmer colors. We're going to leave the vibrance set at zero. We're not going to touch that. We are going to desaturate this. Not too much, about plus, uh, minus 15, minus 20, somewhere around there, just to give it a slight retro kind of look. And then we're done with the basics panel. Next, we're going to move on to the tone curve. And what we're going to do in there is we're going to crush the blacks down a little bit. So nothing too drastic. We're just going to add a couple of points in. Like I usually do, we're going to come down to the very bottom point, which is the dark shadow areas in this, which we've got lots and lots of information if we look at the histogram at the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to crush those. We're going to lift that point up, and we're going to make our blacks be less than black. So we're going to get this kind of old-fashioned kind of flat look to the image. And you can see that any of the black in it, sorry, any of the shadow information past this point is now completely eradicated. So it's all still in the image, but what we're seeing on screen, we're seeing all that being taken out. And we get, instead of a strong black, we now get this slightly flatter gray look, which kind of enhances that Halloween kind of effect. 
So once we've done that, we're now ready to move on to the color information. So we just jump over to the HSL slider. And what we're going to do in there is pretty subtle. We're not going to deal with changing the actual colors themselves. The hue is going to be completely left untouched. But what we are going to do is we're going to concentrate on some of these warmer tones that's in the image. So the glow that we're getting in the candlelight, the reds and the oranges and the browns that we're getting in these leaves, while not affecting any of the other colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the red under saturation. We're going to give that a bit of a boost up quite a lot because there's not a huge amount of this kind of color information in the image, but you'll find that that starts to make the, the leaves pop out a lot more. We're going to do the same with the orange, around right about the same kind of value, somewhere around the 40 mark, 45, somewhere around there. And again, the same with the yellows, but not quite so much. We're going to take these out probably about plus 30, somewhere along that kind of line. That's looking pretty good. So now you can see that the, the warmer tones, the hand, the skin tones, the reds and browns and so on, they all start to pop out a little bit. And we're just going to adjust the luminance as well. We're just going to give the red a little bit of a kick, and we're going to give the orange a little bit more, probably around the, the early 20s, somewhere in there. So let's take a look at before and after. So there's before, you can see the light in the candle and all the leaves, they really do start to pop out. Same with some of the colors that we're picking up in the woodwork, but everything else is then being pretty much left untouched. So that's all we need to do to the, the color information in the image for now. So let's move on now to the split toning section, and we're gonna to start to influence the highlights or the shadows in this partic particular image. Now what I'm aiming to do with this is I want to give the highlights a slightly bluey purple kind of tint and I want to give the shadows a more orangey red kind of tone because it's going to give a sort of overall warmer tone to a lot of the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the hue slider, we're just going to put a bit of saturation in there, we'll probably take it up to about mid-20s. Don't worry about the colour we're seeing at the moment because that's where we're sort of sitting in the red zone. We're going to take this up now, we're going to take that up, up into the blues, the purely blues, Somewhere around somewhere around there. I'm liking that. That's looking pretty good. So you can see if we look at the color chip, we've got this sort of purpley blue tint in there. Next up, we're going to come down and we're going to go to add some saturation into the shadow area. So we're not going to go crazy with this again. About early 15, 20, somewhere around there. As you can see, it's looking a little bit crazy at the moment, a little bit purpley kind of colored. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this over and we're going to take that into the sort of orangey yellow zones. Somewhere around there is looking pretty good. So let's take a look at before, let's take a look at after. So you can see that just gives an overall warmth to the image while still retaining a slightly cool factor because we've set the highlights to be slightly blue. So that kind of has that nice mix between the two different sort of shades. If we wanted to adjust the balance between those colors, we could easily do that. If we want to sort of take it more towards the highlights, we can do that by taking it over to the right or more towards the shadow area, you can take that over to the left. For this example, I'm going to leave that in the middle. That's looking pretty good. I kind of like that. So we're pretty close to the end result now. I just want to jump into the effects section. And what I'm going to do, like I do with a lot of the images, I want to draw attention to the focal point, which in this instance is the little girl standing there with the lamp. So we're just going to grab the post crop vignette. We're going to drag that down to about minus 40, somewhere in that kind of range. And what that'll do is that'll create the vignette on the edges, kind of give it a slightly sinister look, draws your attention into it, which is pretty nice. And then the final thing we're going to do for what's done in the preset is we're going to grab the dehaze and we're going to bump that up to about plus 25 to plus 30, somewhere in that kind of range. Because that really does help to make the, the sort of contrast in the image stand out. So let's take a look at before and take a look at after. And as you can see, that helps to sort of focus the, the, the eye line into the main part of the image, which is kind of towards the center to the left-hand side, which is the lamp and everything. So that's where the preset gets you. And I like that kind of look. But let's take it a couple of steps further now. And again, like I say, this is for this specific image, but it's going to give you an insight into the way that I would process these images. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the Details tab. Now, because they've got such great detail in this sort of knitted cardigan, I want to draw attention to that. I want to make that stand out even more. So we're going to go in and we're going to adjust the sharpening to give it a real overemphasized sharpness to it. So it kind of draws your eye to the detail that's in that, that knitting. So for this example, I'm really going to push the sharpening a lot more than I normally would. So what I'm going to do first of all is use the masking as always. I'm just going to add a little bit of sharpening so I can enable those particular settings. We're going to come into the masking. I'm going to hold the Alt key down on the keyboard and I'm going to drag that over until I can get to the point where the detail that I want to pull out is the main emphasis point. 
So we're going to take that over to probably around there. And you can see if we look at it, the cardigan, the knitting, and some of the sort of detail in the woodwork and that, that's the primary focus of this sharpening effect. Once I'm happy, I'm going to leave that as it is. So I, now I know that the sharpening is going to take primary effect on those areas. So let's grab that sharpening. Let's bump the amount up and go quite crazy with that. We're going to take that. It's probably about 90, somewhere around those, that sort of region. And I'm also going to take the detail and I'm going to adjust that. I'm going to take that down, right the way down to about, about there. That looks pretty good. So before and after doesn't look amazing in this because it's quite zoomed out but you're going to find that that detail is really going to help stand out especially if you printed the image so there it is that's what i would do to this point one final thing i want to make the the sort of the glow of the candle a little bit more evident and the easiest way of doing that is to come up and we're going to use the radial filter tool we could just shift and m to enable that or we can just click on it what I'm going to do now is make sure that I've got everything set up the way I want. So I'm going to reset all these values. So we're just going to set that back to a zero point. And what we're going to do now is we're going to come down to this and we're going to click and hold. I'm going to hold the shift key down on the keyboard to constrain that. And I'm going to draw a circle out from the, the center point of the candle flame. If I need to adjust it, I can grab this little registration dot in the middle and I can adjust that. If I want to see what my mask looked like, I can press O on the keyboard and you can see at the moment the mask is covering everything on the outside, which is not what we want. So we want to go the opposite way. So we're going to go invert mask. So we now know this is the area that's going to be affected. So if I need to adjust it, I can. If I want to adjust the feather, you can see if I take that over to the left hand side, we'll now get a very hard edge on there. If I take it over towards the right hand side, we start to soften that down and get a nice feathered effect on it. So I'm going to put that back to the center point. If we need to adjust that, we can do that retrospectively. And I'll press O on the keyboard again to hide. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the exposure and I'm going to bump that up. And you see, as I do that, it makes it look like there's a lot more glow on the candle itself. I can adjust any of these other settings in there. So if I wanted to, I can adjust the clarity. I can reduce that down to give it a slightly soft glow effect to it. So it looks like there's a, a nice glow. I can bump the contrast if I want to. I can do whatever I want inside these settings. If I want to adjust the feather, I can do that now. So I can adjust that to get exactly the effect that I want. If I find that this isn't big enough or it's too small, I can simply come to any of these resizing handles and I can just click and hold the shift key down again to make sure that I can strain it to be in a circle. And I can just adjust that and do whatever needs to be done to get the effect that I'm after. If I wanted to, I could easily apply a color to this. So I could click on there and choose any color that I want. So let's just say, let's put a sort of a yellowy kind of glow on it. And you can see now that that takes on the characteristics of the color that we just added. If we find that's a little too much, we can use this slider to back it off ever so slightly. And there we go. That's pretty much all there is to it. So once we've done that, we can click on done. And there's our glow on our candle. Now, if we find that that effect is just a little too harsh, we can simply come up choose the radio filter again select the node that we want to edit by clicking on it once that's active we can use the little toggle arrow in the top right hand corner of the effect panel click on that and you can see that now gives it the amount slider and we can adjust that by taking it over to the left hand side to reduce the effect or to the right hand side to intensify it so if we just bring that down a little bit just to make sure we get the glow but we don't lose the detail of the actual candle itself that's looking pretty nice i kind of like that and then we can click on done and everything is complete. And there we go, that's all there is to it. So we've gone through the entire process of creating the preset. We've also taken a few stages further to work on the image as a specific image itself. Well, I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, pop those in the comment section below. And don't forget the link to the free preset is also available in the description below, along with a load of other free presets that you can get from the Essential Lightroom website. Well, until next time, take care.